Okay, let me tell you about my first Les Paul. My first Gibson Les Paul. I was 12 years old. My father owned a plumbing shop, and I was a plumber. And I worked for a year to get my very first Gibson Les Paul Custom, <clears throat> which was very similar to this guitar. It was a 1977 natural top um, custom with a second stamped in the, in the headstock, which me and my father, we didn't know what that meant at the time, but apparently West LA Music did. We bought it anyways, it was $780. I played that guitar forever until I traded it for another Les Paul, uh, you know, a newer, more expensive Les Paul down the road somewhere. That guitar, I learned almost everything I do today, I learned on that guitar. The reason I wanted to get a, a Les Paul in the first place is because of Jimmy Page. You know, um, I had seen the song Remains the Same movie, and to me, that was it. You know, that's it, it started and ended with Jimmy Page at that age, 12 years old. So me and my dad, we walk into the shop, and you know, there's a whole wall of, of various Les Pauls, and you know, the, the big decision was, do I get a, a, a sunburst you know, a cherry sunburst or a tobacco burst, just like Jimmy Page's, you know? And, and I talked about it with my dad and he said, he said, no, you should probably get something different, you know, get something that is, you know, not directly related to somebody else. You know, if you love the guitar, then you're gonna love the guitar no matter what it looks like. I think I played every Les Paul on that wall. And uh, there was something really cool about the custom, you know, it, it just had a more hot rodded feel um, you know, 12 years old, I didn't know what vintage was, and I certainly didn't care what vintage looks were or anything like that. Um, it was just about, you know, playing heavy, and because um, to me, you know, Led Zeppelin was heavy at that time, and uh, that guitar kind of represented what I wanted to do. And strangely enough, <clears throat> um, the next really important guitar player in my life was Randy Rhodes. And uh, the only picture I'd ever seen of him with a guitar was, was on the back of the first Aussie cover. And that came out, you know, a few years later. And I was really into Randy and I saw the back of the cover and he was playing the Cream Les Paul. I'm like, yes, <clears throat> I have a custom like Randy Rhodes, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's the guitar you play if you're a rock and roller. Like any kid that, that gets something that's the most special thing in their life at the time, um, I got to, back to my dad's place and uh, I had a, a little PV amplifier that had the perfect distortion somehow. Playing that guitar on my own, not inside the store, I was really able to, to get that sense of, oh that, my God, this is what a real guitar feels like. This is what a real guitar sounds like. Because I had some other crappy copy guitars, you know? And playing that guitar and that weight, you know, like, you know, these are nine and a half to 11 and a half pound guitars, you know, they're, they're serious business, you know, and just standing up. I remember staring at my dad's stereo because that's what I, 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 you know, put the records on there and then I would put the album cover up and I would stare at the album cover when I'd play along to whatever it was, you know. I just remember just hearing that sound, feeling the guitar and playing everything I was listening to wrong. It didn't matter. It felt so great, you know, and, uh, and to this day, I'm 54 years old, and that's still my main guitar is a Les Paul Custom. And uh, I'm very grateful to both the experience of working for my father to get it and to be able to have that guitar.